Hello, so in a previous episode, we started building a public API using Ruby on Rails. We have added the API namespaced uh, routes and we have created an authenticated controller that would require bearer of token authentication for all our API requests. And we created a home controller that rendered a JSON with the current API token and current user that is using this API token. So uh, let's uh, just see how it used to work. We would have uh, a user, let's say user dot first, and for the user we will generate an API token dot API tokens dot create, and we would get the API tokens uh, token. So this dot token, we would get this token, and we would be able to make a CURL uh, request having uh, this token as uh, the bearer authentication. So I would make this kind of request to the API home index uh, and uh, let me try doing this. You see, I made a request. You could see it uh, here that I actually performed a request and we have this uh, uh, response. So current API token ID three and current user email is this one. So we have this uh, response from the home controller. And now we are going to actually build the front end to be able uh, to manage the API tokens uh, for a user. So if we look at uh, other applications, for example, GitHub, to I created a GitHub uh, app, and uh, here I have uh, uh, API tokens. So I can click generate a new secret token, and I am provided with a new token, I can copy it, uh, but if I refresh the page, there is no way for me to access this uh, token uh, body anymore if I didn't save it for myself. So I can only uh, disable this token or generate a new token if uh, I can't use uh, the previous one. Something similar is in uh, Amazon uh, IAM. I have just generated a token. I have the possibility to copy it, uh, to show it, but if I click done, there is no other way for me to retrieve this token um, again in the future. And you see, I have like the list of tokens that are being used and uh, the endings here. So uh, we're going to build this kind of front end uh, for our application where a logged in user has a list of his tokens. He can see uh, either the beginning or the end of the tokens. He can create, he can disable tokens, and uh, he can see the whole token only when he has just created it, not after he refreshes the page. So how can we do it? First of all, I'm going to add some kind of root. For example, slash API tokens is going to be the root. So let's uh, add it in our roots. I will say resources uh, API tokens. Uh, yeah, through letter C, I guess. And we will need only the actions uh, index, create, and uh, update. Uh, yeah, for the beginning. And let's create this controller. So I will now try once again. Okay, no API tokens controller. So let's go and create this uh, controller uh, inside our normal controllers, not inside API, API tokens controller dot RB. And uh, it will be class API tokens controller that inherits from application controller. And uh, we will have a, an index, that index. Let's refresh once again. Okay, it's missing a template. And here we are going to, well, render the current user's API token. So at API tokens equals current user dot API tokens. And uh, let's ensure that this works. Do we have API tokens association on user? Yes, we do. Okay, so now let's add the template. I will go to uh, app uh, views API tokens. Uh, index.html.erb. Let's see if this is accessible. Okay, and here I will have uh, at API tokens dot each do API token. And we are going to display uh, some kind of information about the token, like uh, API token dot token. Okay, and now we have the tokens themselves. So we don't want uh, the whole uh, tokens to be ever visible. We will just say token dot truncate and for example, six uh, elements. Okay, so let's make it a bit more like 10 elements. 
So we see just the first uh, six, uh, yeah, or seven elements of the token, yeah. So in total, 10 uh, digits and seven are visible, I guess. That's what Chunky 10 does. Okay, so uh, yeah, we have uh, a list of our API tokens and now let's make it so that we can create an API token. So let's add a create button here. We will say equals button to uh, create API token, uh, API tokens path. And uh, let's see if this hits the create action. So I will uh, go here and say def create and I will click create API token and uh, what happens? Uh, we started posting and uh, it renders had no content. Okay, so we do, do here this create action and we need to actually create the API token. I will say current user dot API tokens dot create. And we will say at API token equals current user API tokens create. Okay, let's see if it works now. I will refresh, I will click create API token. I'll refresh and you see an API token has been created. Now, um, we don't want to have to refresh and we want to actually uh, display the token body here. So how can we do it? We're going to use tuba streams for this. So we will say uh, respond uh, to do format uh, format turbo stream is going to be the default format and we're going to create a create tuba stream inside our views. So create dot turbo stream dot ERB. And here I will say equals turbo stream dot, uh, so we're going to, let's say, add a new to token on top. So append to API tokens do, and we will have uh, uh, the at uh, API token dot token. And we need to define this API tokens inside our index. So we will wrap this all into div ID API tokens. Closing the div. And uh, yeah, let's see if this works. So uh, going back, here I have this create API token. I click it. Oh yeah, and it was added uh, yeah on the bottom because I used, yeah. Append, append, and prepend is on the top, so prepend. Okay, prepend. Let's see if it works. I click prepend, and yes, it has been added on top. Uh, yeah, you see it was added in line with this one. Let's just move this break uh, somewhere else, or actually wrap this in a div. Let's see if it helps. I will create a new token. Uh, okay, here it is. Let's try using this token to make a request. So uh, going back, I will use the newly generated token. Uh, let me just copy it. And the request has been successful. Okay, so now whenever we click create a new API token, we do generate a new API token and it is visible. I can add multiple API tokens, but when I refresh, uh, only the first seven characters are visible. Let's also uh, put this in a div to be sure that it is uh, the only element on the line. Okay, so this way we are creating as many API tokens uh, as we want. Okay, works well. Let's now also see. In the API tokens model, we can see if the token is active. So let's uh, allow users to deactivate the API token. So um, let's also then display if the API token is active. I will say uh, equals API token dot uh, active. And it says true next to all the active API tokens. So uh, let's uh, then add a button to deactivate the API token. We'll have button to uh, deactivate. Uh, we will have uh, the path uh, that will be API token path. 
API token uh, method will be patch and uh, let's see if uh, hidden that deactivate will hit the update action so let's create the update action def update and let's click deactivate on one of the tokens i click deactivate let's have a look at the console and you see we have started patch and uh, no template found for update action yeah so in the update action we will just say uh yeah we're going to get the api token that we are trying to update so it will be uh at api token equals api current user dot api tokens dot find uh, params id so we are finding the api token by this id and we are going to disable it so at api token dot update active false let's see if it works for us now i'm going to disable the first token clicking deactivate let's have a look at the console there has been an update i will refresh and you see the token is now not active so i can deactivate a few tokens refreshing and they're all inactive okay looks good and as a final touch to this we can also respond with the format tuba stream to update the activity status so um, we will add the update dot turbo stream dot erb and uh, we would uh, well i think we render the api token uh, and i think without the deactivate button because it has already been deactivated right so uh, let's actually extract this into a partial uh, i will create an api token dot html dot erb partial i will place this inside and here i will say render partial api tokens uh, slash api token locales api token is api token okay let's see if it works and uh, yeah here i will say we will have this button uh, if api token is active okay so for the inactive ones we don't have the deactivate button makes sense and uh, we can uh, re-render this partial inside our update uh, to the stream action so i'll just copy this code i'm going to say to the stream dot update and we're going to update the dom id uh, or just the like at api token so we are updating the api token uh, and uh, we are going to re-render the yeah, we're going to i think replace replace api token we're going to have the partial uh, yes the partial and uh, we need to define this uh, api token uh, in our partial so here we'll have div id uh, that will be uh at api token uh, let's see if it works so i'm going to deactivate this token for example okay undefined uh, api token uh, let's see why uh in the update to the stream erb i would have to say at api token let's try now so i will click deactivate here and there seems to have been some kind of uh, error because the deactivate button hasn't disappeared i will refresh you see now it has disappeared so there must have been an error maybe it doesn't find uh, this uh, element i will say replace dom id at api token and here i will also uh, uh, use uh, dom id at api token this might work let's try once again so 
uh, okay, undefined method to key. It's only getting worse. Um, yeah, I don't have to have this at here. Okay, so I have DOM ID API token here uh, and DOM ID in the update action. So let's uh, try once again. I will click deactivate and yes, now it is being updated. So uh, I don't have to refresh the page to actually see the deactivation but and uh, to create, I also have all these tokens added. So yeah, this is the basic front end and uh, feel free to style it the way you want it to look in your application. But now a uh, logged in user can go to slash API tokens and create or disable API tokens. And just for the sake of experiment, let's take a, a newly created API token, make uh, a request. Okay, now I will uh, deactivate this token. Uh, what was this token's beginning? 408. Let's find this token. I will deactivate the token. Now I will go and make the request and you see message bad credentials. So we cannot uh, make a successful API request with an invalid token. That makes sense. And yeah, that's it for this episode. See you in the next one.